Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Stephanie. I'm Tom. It's our literature unit, and our novel of choice is *The Count of Monte Cristo*. It's a really、uh, great novel. It's very famous. This is a novel, guys, that would be regarded as classic literature. It's、uh, been around for. Actually,、um, decades, a couple hundred years, really, and it's been very successful. They've made it into a movie at least two or three times. I talked about the version of the Count of Monte Cristo I liked that was made in two thousand two. For the the lead part of Dante's, it was、uh, Jim Caviezel, who is so gorgeous. Ladies, you got to check that out. And、uh, but it goes back、uh, before that. Even there are some older versions as well. So today we're going to continue on with the plot. I know that we've got several character names in this、uh, novel that you want to keep track of. We understand, and they're also in a foreign language that might be a little bit harder to remember. But、uh, we're going to、uh, keep our focus on these characters so you don't get too lost or confused. And then in the third day, as we、uh, like to do, we talk about the author for a bit, and also about some of the themes and、um, the messages in this particular novel and what the Author Dumas or Dumas, if you don't speak French, was trying to communicate to those who read his book. Let's get started, guys. Tom's going to read through day two right now. Years later, the Count arrives in Paris. His vast wealth makes a great impression and allows Monte Cristo to acquaint himself with his enemies. He is now in a position to implement their downfalls. First, he exposes Fernand's past. Fernand betrayed those he served in return for the money to buy his way into high society, and conceal his origins as a fisherman. Dishonored, Fernand ends his life. Upon discovering the count is behind his father's disgrace, Albert challenges him to a duel. Monte Cristo coldly prepares to kill the young man. But Mercedes visits him first. She recognized Dantes from the beginning and pleads with him to spare her son. The Count agrees, and though he and Mercedes will not renew their relationship, they part as friends. Next, the Count manipulates certain events to bring Villefort's sins to light. Villefort had an affair with Dangler's wife and tried to bury their illegitimate son alive. Monte Cristo also supplies Villefort's wife with poison, which she uses to murder her relatives so that her son can inherit the family's wealth. When this plot is discovered by Villefort, she poisons both herself and her child. Villefort is driven mad by these tragedies, but when the Count sees what's happened, he starts to wonder if his revenge has gone too far. He goes back to the prison where he was held captive. To strengthen his will to continue, Monte Cristo ruins Dangler's financially and leaves him starving and penniless, and forces him to become a prisoner himself. In the end, however, the Count realizes that while he has accomplished his revenge, this has not made him happy. He forgives Dangler's and releases him. Dantes leaves his riches behind and embarks upon the next chapter of his life. Let's continue on with the plot here, guys. So at this point, we know that uh, uh, Dantes, who has found the treasure on the island called Monte Cristo, he's、um, become fabulously wealthy. He's unrecognizable now after 14 years of being in prison,、um, and it was tough in prison. But you know what?、Uh, after 14 years, a lot of people's faces will change too.、Um, I have some friends, and I think, "Wow, you look so different now."、Um, so he doesn't look the same. So he's able to hide his identity. He's disguised himself, and now he's arrived in Paris. As a count, so he's wealthy, he's handsome, and he's ready to get revenge. Right, and remember, he's in disguise, so these people initially don't recognize him. So again, his vast wealth makes a great impression on the people there, and then he begins to acquaint himself. 
with those people that he hates. And here we've got the verb to acquaint yourself with someone. It's actually more of a phrase.、Uh, we almost always use this in this phrasal.、Uh, Construction here、mm -hmm. to acquaint yourself with something.、Uh, if you're a new at a company, for example,、uh, your trainer might say, "Yes, you need to acquaint yourself with our company's policies." For example, you need to become familiar with them. You need to know about them. So he tries to acquaint himself with his enemies. He wants to meet them and talk to them and find out what they're doing and where they work, where they live, and stuff like that. Now remember, this Monte Cristo or Monte Cristo is a new person to these people, but he's actually reacquainting himself with his enemies, and not just acquainting himself. He already knows his enemies, of course, but since he's playing a, a new character, he's pretending to be someone else. We're going to say he's acquainting himself with his enemies. So he's now in a position to implement their downfalls. When you talked about someone's downfall, just means they've lost their power. Maybe they've lost their job, their status. Everything bad has happened to them. So at one point they were probably、uh, quite wealthy or had a high status in society, but after their downfall. They really were kind of sad, and、uh, we know that after you lose your money and prestige in today's world, some of those old friends of yours they just don't want to hang out with you anymore. Once you're not quite as wealthy or famous, those are not true friends. Uh, indeed. So again, he's in a position to bring about their downfalls. He's going to cause them to fall from grace.、Uh, he's going to make them suffer, basically.、Yeah. And first, he exposes Fernand's past. Okay, that's what he wants to do. Fernand is his first target, his first victim. He exposes his past. He tells people about what Fernand did in the past, and Fernand betrayed those he served in return for the money to buy his way into high. By society, and conceal his origins as a fisherman. So again, he betrayed people.、Uh, if you betray people, basically you stab them in the back. They did something nice for you, but then later you do something bad to them. You're supposed to be nice to them because they did something nice to you before, but instead you destroy them. You treat them badly. That's what betrayed means here.、Uh, if you have an affair with somebody outside your marriage, you are betraying your spouse. Fernand,、um, remember, made his living or his wealth as a soldier. But we find out here he actually started out as a very lowly or low-class fisherman. He、um, back then, at least, you could be in pretty high society if you were in the military, if you're one of the military leaders, especially, and you could actually make money、um, in wars by selling weapons. Actually, that's still done today, isn't it?、Mm. So yeah, he had betrayed those he served,、um, and those that's his country in return for the. Money to buy his way into high society, and to conceal means hide. So he hid his origins as a fisherman. Back then, your status was so important in Europe. So if you were born in a low class, they did not want you ever to go middle class or even high class. You had to stay in the class that you were born into, and that's exactly why people moved to America so that they could, you know, through their hard work and ambition, become、uh, successful and wealthy. Why not? So he was、uh, dishonored when people found out that he'd betrayed those. That he had said he was serving, and so he felt dishonored. If you're dishonored, you've done something bad、um, that has really kind of destroyed your reputation. So he's dishonored, and he had、uh, a lot of shame, and he felt disgraced.、Um, so he did it to himself, right? So instead of、uh, living out his life disgraced and always embarrassed, he ended his life, which means he killed himself. Yep, he committed suicide, which I think was kind of silly.、Uh, he should have gone back to his job as a fisherman. You get to be outside, you get to、sure. sail on the ocean blue, you get all the seafood you could ever want in your whole life, and you probably live long, live longer than those snobs who live in Paris. But he decided to end his life because he was dishonored, he was disgraced, he lost face, and then upon discovering the count is behind his father's disgrace, Albert challenges him to a duel. 
Paul. So Albert is Fernand's son, right?、Mm -hmm. So、is. Albert, of course, is pretty angry that.、Uh, That、uh, let's see, who's this guy?、Um, the count. Okay, well, I'll just call him the count for now. He's angry that the count caused his father's death, so he wants revenge, and he challenges him to a duel, which is a sort of competition. They hold guns and they、uh, are back to back, and then they might make maybe take ten steps or something,、yeah. and then they turn around and try to shoot each other. I think one of the world's most famous duels was、uh, between Alexander Hamilton and、uh, the Burr guy. I can't remember. His first name, but、uh, that was in American history. I think it's Raymond Burr.、Oh, that's it? that's it, Raymond yeah, Burr. That's、go. right. And、uh, yes, Alexander Hamilton, of course, lost that duel.、Uh, as I'm sure that's covered in that、uh, Broadway play,、uh, Alexander Hamilton. Hamilton. Hamilton, a musical. Yeah.、Mm -hmm. So Albert is much younger, but he feels like he needs to do this, so he challenges the count to a duel. Monte Cristo coldly prepares to kill the young man. He doesn't care about him, but his former fiance Mercedes visits the count first, and she recognized Dante's from the beginning.、Um, if you do see the movie I was talking about, and I think it's.、Uh, Streaming online somewhere, you'll see that she recognizes Dante's because when、uh, he's thinking, he he plays with his hair. His finger is in his hair, twirls a curl or two, and he does that after he comes back as the count. And she recognizes that gesture、um, and realizes, oh my goodness, they told me he was dead and he's still alive. Um, so she recognized him from the beginning when he comes back to Paris, and she pleads with him to spare her son. To spare someone in this、uh, situation just means do not kill them or don't do not hurt them. Have mercy on her son, and、uh, thankfully he's not such a terrible person that he says, "Forget it, I'm killing that teenage." Jerk.、Um, he ends up going okay. Okay. He does spare the son.、Um, I think he he's lost his love entirely for this lady. He feels like she should have known that、uh, something was wrong. She married Fernand way too fast after he supposedly、uh, died. She was told he was dead, but he wasn't. So spare here is being used as a verb. Just means to、um, stop yourself from. Killing someone, or injuring someone, or upsetting someone, but you guys know spare as、uh, an adjective, a noun, right? A spare tire, extra something extra would be spare. Spare change, that's different. Here we're actually using it as a verb, just meaning to、uh, stop yourself or restrain yourself from killing or hurting someone. And the count agrees, and though he and Mercedes will not renew their relationship, they part as friends. If you renew something, you start something again.、Uh, if you check out a book from the library and you want to keep reading it, you can renew that book. Uh, you can extend the time. You can keep the book. Or if you're a member of an exercise gym, for example, and you want to keep、uh, exercising until next year, so you renew your membership. And they decided、uh, not to continue their relationship, so they part as friends. And that seems logical because、uh, she did prove to be kind of.、Uh, Uh, you know, kind of impulsive there when she married that other guy. So if I were the count here, I would say, yeah, she's no good, even though she's good at detecting the way he、uh, fondled his own hair. Okay, that brings us to the end of the first part of our lesson. Let's take a break and listen to our Chinese teacher. 听众朋友，大家好，我是安娜。我们昨天谈到基督山仇记的主角 Dentis， 他要开始展开他的复仇喽。好，今天这个文章啊，一开始就谈到了。经过好多年之后呢，伯爵啊，他后来成为基督山伯爵嘛 ，you know， 好来到了巴黎。那么他现在很有钱哦，他的财富已经大到让人可以留下很深刻的印象，而且也让他结识他的敌人。所以现在的基督山伯爵，也就是我们的主角 Dentis， 已经处于可以让敌人垮台的地步。好，我们来看一下第一段，在第二句当中 ，end 之后这个 allow allow， 因为我们中文常都被允许的意思，其实它也有使人如何如何 allow someone to do something
。那么要特别注意一下它的用法 ，allow someone to do something， 因为这个大考至少我看过过去十几年的考题已经考过至少两次以上了。好，所以这个就要特别注意它的用法。好，那它到底怎么做呢？首先，它揭穿了 Fernand 的过去。Fernand 到底做什么事啊 ？Fernand 因为背叛了他服役的长官，换得金钱，让他自己可以买通进入上流社会，而且还隐藏他自己渔民的身份。好，我们看一下第二段第二句的地方出现一个关系子句，先行词是 those 那些那些人。后面的关系子句 he served 只有两个字哦，省略的关系词 who 省略的。那因为我们知道 Fernand 后来是从军致富嘛，所以在这里的 serve 其实就是服役的意思。好，那么又隐藏他的渔民身份呐、啊，然后又又背叛长官呢、啊，换得金钱，所以他觉得很羞愧，居然自己结束自己的生命哎。我们看一下第三句这个地方也是个分词构句哦。它原本的句子应该是 Because Fernand is dishonored. 逗点 He ends his life. 如果我们把连接词 because 删掉 ，Fernand 就是逗点之后的主词，所以 Fernand 也删掉，剩下的 be 动词直接变成 b e i n g。不过因为 be 动词它是一种功能性的动词，本身没有意义，所以既然句子要简化的话，通常也会直接删掉。好，这个分词构句特别注意哦。不过后面呢、啊，我们看到文意上是一发现伯爵就是父亲不光彩事迹的背后的人 ，Albert 就。向他提出了决斗。我们看一下第二段的第四句，这边有一个句型 ，upon doing something。upon 就是 on 的意思，它是个介系词哦。但是在这个句型当中，它指的是一怎么样的时候就如何如何，表示时间。所以一发现伯爵就是如何如何，所以这个句型要特别把它画起来。好，既然提出了决斗，当然就是一定是不是你死就是我亡嘛。所以基督山伯爵啊，本来打算要很冷血的杀了这个年轻小伙子，但是 Mercedes， 也就是他之前的未婚妻，就抢先拜访了他。因为其实 Mercedes 从一开始就认出 d e n t i s t 也就是这个伯爵，根本就是他当年认识的 d e n t i s t 所以就恳求他赦免自己的儿子。好啦，伯爵同意了。虽然他跟 Mercedes 没有重修旧好，但是他们是以朋友的形式告别。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. We are going to dive in to the third paragraph here. When we left you. We had just seen the count、um, be talked into sparing Albert's life, so we know that he didn't go ahead and kill Albert in the duel that Albert challenged him to, but that he still didn't want to renew his friendship or relationship, his romantic relationship with Mercedes.、Um, you know, at this point, her husband Fernand has killed himself, so they could they could have、uh, gone back into a relationship, but. He chooses not to. I think he's lost his love for her, but they part as friends. So this is moving on to the third paragraph. It says here, next, the count manipulates certain events to bring Villefort's sins to light. If you bring something to light, it just means something has been unknown or hidden or concealed, and suddenly people can see what's going on, or、uh, maybe something is understood better. Uh, because somebody has actually explained something a little better,、uh, but he manipulates, which means he does certain things,、um, which maybe、um, you know he he's not actually honest when he does it when he's manipulating things, but he sets things up so that people realize that Villefort has some sins they didn't know about before. So he suddenly exposes Villefort's sins. That's what we could say here. 
Wow, this、uh, looks like a good book to read、uh, if you're,、uh, you know, living your life and you want revenge on someone or you want to improve your position in a company. You might want to manipulate certain situations. You know, set up a meeting between people so that、uh, certain person's dark side is exposed, and then you can take advantage. What of are、it. you encouraging people to do here, Tom?、Uh, yeah, I shouldn't be saying that kind of、no. stuff, but、uh, it is a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there sometimes. You no, know, the whole point of the book is don't go. Out for revenge, you'll just waste your life, and you won't be happy. Oh my goodness! Well, it could happen that way, but he does kind of、uh, control these events. He manipulates them so that Villefort's sins will come to light, so that they will be revealed. And Villefort had an affair with Dongler's wife、Ooh. and tried to bury their illegitimate son alive.、Terrible. That's a bad boy. He committed adultery there, having an affair with someone's wife, and then he tried to kill. A kid. He、Horrible. tried to bury that kid alive, and of course, this is an illegitimate son, which means a child born from someone who's not married, and that doesn't really turn heads nowadays. But back in France, at, in during the day, ooh, that was something you did not want to do. Oh yeah, that was really a no-no. So Monte Cristo, he goes to Villefort's wife. She knows now what's going on, and he supplies the wife, who's probably so. So angry and so upset that her husband has had an affair and then tried to kill the illegitimate child.、Uh, Monte Cristo gives her some poison. Oh, how convenient! So the poison is something she's supposed to use to murder her relatives so that her son can inherit the family's wealth. She doesn't sound like such a good, great、uh, soul either. She's kind of a bad. Bad lady too, so she's going to use the poison. You know, if you drink poison, if it doesn't kill you, at least the it, it can make you very sick. So she uses it to murder her relatives, just so that her son can inherit that money. Because boy. Uh, people do crazy things for money. That's still true even today. A lot of people will murder for money. To inherit means when someone dies, that person leaves their wealth, their property, any sort of possessions they have to you, which you will then、uh, own or take care of.、Uh, but someone has to die first for you to inherit something. Yeah, I hear stories about this kind of thing all the time. When somebody's parents die,、uh, is the son going to get the house, or is the other son going to get the house, or something?、Uh, these are arguments over who gets to inherit the family's wealth. And of course, this involves Villefort. And when this plot is discovered by Villefort, well, she decides to poison both herself and her child.、Uh, so she's committing suicide, and she's also killing her child, which is not a nice thing to do. You're not supposed to kill your kids. They're supposed to be innocent and all this kind of stuff. And Villefort is driven mad by these tragedies.、Uh, I would be too if my child were to be killed like that. So he's going insane. He's going mad. But when the count sees what's happened, well, he starts to have. Uh, a conscience, as we say, he starts to wonder if his revenge has gone too far. Yes, I wanted to have revenge, but now all these people are suffering because of that. Maybe I've gone too far. Maybe I've done too much. You think? Well, he goes back to prison. I think he wants to go back to the prison where he was held、uh, captive, just to sort of, you know, straighten out his life, get his.、Uh, Thoughts, you know, in、uh, in order, because right now things are out of control. When when he's been trying to get his revenge, so he was held captive in the prison earlier. Captive just means a person is imprisoned; they're confined; they can't escape from something. So you can also be held captive by something that's really interesting or entertaining to watch. But here we're actually talking about someone who is imprisoned, and he goes back to this prison to strengthen his will to continue. Yeah, I guess his conscience was saying, "I got to stop. This is enough." But then he goes back to the prison,、um, you know, just to kind of strengthen his will. To continue, I guess, getting revenge or maybe、uh, continue on with his life. To strengthen just means to make something stronger. We'll often take、uh, a word like length or strength and add an en, and it turns into a verb. To、uh, to give more strength to make something stronger.、Um, so that's what he does. He goes back to that prison where he probably had some. 
a little bit of peace, probably when he had his、uh, long talks with the priest, at least. Yeah. yeah Father Faria, I guess, would be his name. But、uh, you know, I think、uh, what he's doing here is going back to the prison in order to become a bad guy again. He's getting too soft, <laughs> and、uh, he hasn't completed his revenge, <laughs> so he needs to go back to the prison to remind himself of the terrible things that other people did、oh, to him. Okay. And so that will that will strengthen his will to go back and ruin some more people. And that's what happens in the next paragraph here.、Uh, Monte Cristo. Ruins Dangler's financially and leaves him starving and penniless, and forces him to become a prisoner himself. Financially just means in terms of money, so he ruins him financially.、Mm -hmm. He figures out a way for Dangler's to lose all his money and start going in debt. So he's starving, he's penniless, and then he, of course, probably starts stealing things and gets arrested and becomes a prisoner himself. Well, you know, he realizes this is the count. He realizes that he has accomplished his revenge, but it sure hasn't made him happy. And that's why you're taught to forgive people, not to help them, but to help your own soul feel better about life. So he forgives Donglers and releases him, lets him go, and Dantes leaves his riches behind. Wow! He doesn't even take his wealth with him, and he embarks upon the next chapter of his life. We don't know where he goes, but he gets out of Paris. Maybe he's going to, back to that island or something. I think he wants to find a new place entirely and just turn over a new leaf. But he. He leaves his riches behind. Very interesting. Interesting indeed. So yeah, we sort of uh, uh, told you the whole plot there, but still, this is probably worth trying to read, especially if you want to learn about how to manipulate people in certain situations. If you too want some revenge, okay. That brings us to the end of our explanation for today. Here comes our Chinese teacher. 接着伯爵还做些什么事呢？接着他操控了一些事情，然后公开了 v i l l e f o r d 的罪行。还记得那个 v i l l e f o r d 是法官吧 ？OK， 那么公开了他的一些什么样的 sin， 什么样的罪呢？因为 v i l l e f o r d g a n d a n g l e r s 的妻子有婚外情。还记得 Danglers 吧？就是写 d e n t i s 那个呃，控控告他是一个这个叛国贼的那个人，他的敌人。好 ，Villaford 跟 Danglers 的妻子是有婚外情，而且他们还企图活埋自己的私生子。好，那当然被这个公开之后呢 ，Villaford 算是被报仇了。除此之外。基督山伯爵还提供 v i l l a f o r d 的妻子毒药，为什么呢？因为要用这个毒药来毒死他的亲戚，好让他的儿子可以继承家中的财产。我们要看一下这一段第三句哦。第三句因为带了一个关系子句，还蛮长的。先行词是 poison 毒药 ，poison 之后从汇取到结尾的地方是补充性的。非用非限定用法的关系子句，这个 which 指的就是毒药喽。毒药后面 she v i l l a f o r d 他的妻子就用来谋杀了亲戚。中间 so that 可以框起来，连接词表示目的。这样一来，他的儿子就可以继承财产。好，所以当这个计谋被 v i l l a f o r d 发现之后，他的妻子就把自己跟他儿子给毒死了。当然，这种悲剧对任何人来说都是。太过火了，所以 v i l l a f o r d 整个精神异常。但是伯爵看到他发生这一切，他就有点怀疑他自己的 revenge 是不是太 over 了。但是他因为真的很想要报复，所以他就回到了当初沦为阶下囚的监狱，然后强化自己继续报仇的意志。我们来看一下这个第三段最后这一句第六句的地方有一个关系子句哦，先行词是 the prison 监狱。那么关系子句从 where 到句尾的地方可以左右挂号起来。关系词是 where， 在监狱当中 ，he was held captive， 他当时是一个囚徒，所以在这个监狱当中，他要强化他自己的 will 意志才能够报复下去。好，那么到最后呢？真的报复成功了。基督山伯爵在金钱上摧毁了 Danglers， 让他挨饿，身份无闻，身无分文，又逼着他成为狱囚。不过到最后，他突然领悟到，虽然自己实现了复仇，但是却没有办法让他觉得很开心。我们来看一下最后这一段的第二句。第二句当中有一个 while，while while 根据文意在这里是 although， 虽然的意思。
，虽然复仇，但是没有很开心，所以最后呢，他原谅了 Danglers， 释放他，并且抛下财富，然后展开自己人生的下个篇章。我们明天会针对这个大作品《基督山恩仇记》再做一些文学性的讨论。我是安娜，我们明天见喽。That's it for today, everybody. But please join us again next time when we talk about the author and some themes and ideas in our featured work of literature for the month of April, *The Count of Monte Cristo*. We look forward to seeing you then. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. See ya.